Hello everyone. You're welcome to this week's Tech Tuesdays webinar on ADC Advanced Scanners. I'm Vrinda, your host for today's webinar. Today we have Devashi Sharma, Senior Product Manager from the Research and Development Team, having 15 years of experience in distinct data journeys and product management, who is also responsible for EDC standard and advanced scanners. And we have Thomas Zelen as well joining us, who is a director from Advanced Customer Engineering, having 14 years of experience with varied advanced scanners and customer engagement. He's also a specialist for EDC advanced scanners. Before we start this webinar, let's go through some housekeeping tips. This webinar is for one hour, including the 15 minutes Q&A. You can post your queries in the Q&A box. Dial-in participants are muted for this webinar. The session is being recorded and will be available in the Informatica Support YouTube channel and the Success Portal. The recording will be emailed to you as well. You can put in your feedbacks and suggestions for the session in the post-webinar survey. The Tech Tuesdays webinar program is hosted within the Success Portal. The Informatica Success Portal is a microlearning platform offering free and unlimited learning to all registered users. This feature-rich platform was launched to help you learn and use Informatica products better. Our newly launched data governance learning path in the Success Portal will enable you to implement data-centric approach to compliance based on your role. Here are a few important links that you can go over later that will help you in your product adoption journey with Informatica. Over to you, Devashish and Thomas. Thank you. Thank you so much, Brinda, for the introduction. Hello, everyone. My name is Devashish, and I am part of product management group for EDC, and I am accompanied by Thomas today, who is a part of uh, advanced customer engineering team. And today we are trying to cover the advanced scanner for 10.5. In the month of February, we had a session for uh, for EDC 10.5 overview. This is a continuation session that we have today where we will cover, a, we will try to do a deep dive session on advanced scanner and post that next week, we will have another session where we'll cover the discovery part of it. So stay tuned uh, and and uh, for, for more updates to come. Before we get started, uh, there is a disclaimer that I want to voice out that this is all the content of this presentation is specifically for information it should not become a candidate for uh, for any future purchase. Uh, the details that have been shared on this on this call it can be changed uh, in terms of time, in terms of scope, and that can happen on the sole discretion of Informatica. So, what is essentially the data lineages, right? So, data data lineage is something that gives us a confidence of uh, of where the data is coming from versus where the data is going in my ecosystem and what's happening to the data while it is traveling from source to destination inside the ecosystem. And, and the, the lineage uh, is, is basically the trace of, of data from source to the destination and, and all the hops that it takes inside my ecosystem. Who's looking for the data lineage. So to start with, uh, the regulatory compliance team is definitely looking for this data lineage because this this is the team that is looking uh, um, for or the regulators have been looking for for the data uh, inside the organization from MIFID, GDPR, RT, uh, FRTB or CCAR or B, BCBS to 39 perspective. They are looking from from all the angles and if you have the clear understanding of your data, is the only way that you can demonstrate the control that you have on your data. Data quality again is is an important aspect that you are looking at your data from the quality perspective that you do not have duplicates, the silos of data, and that's been taken care. Of. Data governance team is looking from to the same data from the governance perspective. They want to make sure that that it is uh, it is covering uh, all the governance aspect onto it. Analytics perspective, there are data, data scientists and data stewards who are looking at the same data set from the analytics perspective. Uh, data privacy and security team is looking at the same data from 
uh, the perspective perspective of, uh, of 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 the data domain and a classification so that they know that the data which is which is available for for everyone in the organization is basically covered from the security and privacy perspective there are basically uh, four major use cases that we have identified. Number one is the uh, dev uh, uh, use case where uh, the technology team is looking uh, forward for a solution that gives them the end-to-end -end impact analysis and lineage of their assets. So they can, they can do uh, analysis of what all can happen uh, to uh, to the data in, inside the organization if the data has been uh, is is been landed into uh, into the ecosystem then it has been moved to multiple hops inside the ecosystem and then it is undergoing transformation and going business logic manipulation on top of the data and eventually what is the final destination where the data is getting settled and then uh, that in information becomes key for all the technical staff because they would want to understand that what if I do a change over here, what all are the total impact of this change and which all the applications should get further impacted for this. Operational efficiency is again a bigger use case where, uh, where data becomes a key aspect from, uh, from the duplicacy clearance and then data silos and, and reduction of cost perspective. You you want to make sure your 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 data is is up on the data quality aspect you would as a as a data owner you wouldn't want to make sure that you have a clear understanding of your data landscape when it comes to a data uh, you, when it comes to a migration or a modernization a business transformation uh, project where where you you are looking forward to have a end to end data coverage be it a, lift and shift or or an upgrade come migration kind of exercise you need to make sure that you have an to an understanding of the data ai ml uh, is is again a uh, important use case because because the data that you are tracking which which eventually become a source for uh, to train the models and govern ai projects and then essentially uh, develop that trust onto the data which, which is used by data stewards and data scientists to eventually use that data for their analytics purpose. The technical challenge that we are trying to solve over here are twofold. One is that in your organization, you have a variety of sources, variety of applications, which are using multiple tools. It can be a new age cloud-based tools or, or, a, or a ETL tool or a legacy uh, warehouse, uh, Main, mainframe system, it, it can be a warehouse, it can be a lake, it can be a file system, it can be a hand-coded script. And then if you are a data lineage tool is not covering all of them, that is where you would not be able to uh, cover the end-to-end -end, uh, data lifecycle in the ecosystem. The other thing is that what is the level of depth that the, that the governance tool or, uh, or a lineage tool can go to, right? If you're looking into your application, there are still black boxes when you look into a, a specific application from, from the deep dive perspective, uh, you would have scripts, you'll have code in the legacy mainframe system. You have a multi-vendor ETL tool, which has transformations and transformations are further using uh, the SQL overrides on top of it or a BI application. So you you need to have uh, you you are it's something that makes it so difficult for any enterprise to look into the data from the completeness and the deep dive perspective and those are the major challenges that organizations are facing as we talked today. EDC advanced scanners EDC uh, and uh, scanners bring that capability. We have the coverage from. Uh, uh, from databases to file systems to BI tools to ETLs to applications to cloud-based uh, vendors, and then we are talking about not just uh, the lineage, the catalog of of the application. We are also talking about the catalogs of the catalogs. Take an example of uh, a navigator for Cloudera or uh, a Glue for for AWS. We we are able to 
use those catalogs as the source and then become a true catalog of catalogs where we can uh, scan everything that that sits under those catalogs and then being able to develop that capability which can which can do a multifold uh, catalog lineage view today at informatica we have the broadest and the most complete metadata connectivity solution we have of it be it bi databases big data uh, applications cloud systems everything else has been covered uh, with 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 our coverage and with the advanced scanners been coming in we can do uh, everything which is code and scripting related or etl mainframes or or bi tool perspective is getting covered so now we have the most complete uh, coverage from the connectivity perspective now, enterprise data catalog advanced scanners is the is the answer for for all the questions that we have from the challenges perspective it can it can do a deep dive detailed lineage of the complex to very complex enterprise system it can parse your code uh, to a stored procedure to a script to a to a transformation in atl to be it a static or a dynamic code that that gets covered it the the advanced scanners allows you to extract metadata and drives detailed data lineage from many data sources including the most complex systems such as legacy mainframes sql or, or or any other multi cloud environment the scanners can parse stored procedure sql scripts code uh, that exist in mainframes or uh, any statistical tool or, or the end to end data lineage that resides in these systems enterprise data catalog advanced scanners extract detailed data lineage from the complex systems and tackle the most stringent data lineage requirement now look at this example where we are talking about uh, the, the complexity of the sql code there's no other vendor today who can who can scan the dynamic sql there are many vendors who cannot scan even the static static sql code informatica is the only player today in the market who can who, who can scan the overall sql from the data lineage extraction perspective the advanced scanners also come with a deep layer lineage visualization uh, application that gives you a, a detail that converts your your mapping into into a subgraph to gives you a better deal to understand how uh, uh, your your data is is getting transformed into inside the the specific uh, stored procedure for that matter so it gives it allows a user to run analytics on top of it analyze the stored procedure uh, understand the column mapping uh, from from ex transformation expression perspective we also have a advanced uh, custom metadata load, loader that basically lets you load uh, uh, the metadata uh, which, which are which are custom in a business friendly uh, nature in the business friendly process you you are being allowed to load uh, a uh, custom uh, metadata uh, be it in in a database or in a spreadsheet or xml json or csv uh, without writing even a single line of code it is a it is a simple configurable item and you just have to configure and set up once and then keep repeating it uh, for for that model every time it, it is also brings you uh, the auditing and governance control over the metadata extraction that you have done and once it is the extraction is completed uh the the manual ex, uh, extraction or a custom extraction versus a resource extraction looks very same what essentially we want to achieve is we don't want to leave any metadata behind so to cover that coverage we we have to cover the breadth of the metadata when we are talking about breadth of the metadata we are making sure that stored procedure mainframes etl bi applications everything has been covered be it a uh, sql that is that is very much inside your code we we get it covered from depth perspective we can penetrate inside your your product uh, your your tools like like for transformation perspective in in an example of etl uh, the code can uh, the the scanner can read uh, the piece of logic that's been written inside your transformation there's a there's a override query that's used in the transformation or in if there's a dynamic sql or a handwritten script that has been used 
that is a level of penetration that we can bring. Eventually, the, we, we need to make sure that we have to have an end-to-end data lineage so, so that there's no surprise that is left. The clear uh, end-to-end end coverage brings a, a clear view of the data and making sure that the, the lineage is more complete, uh, which, which, could, which could not be extracted before. Uh, from integration perspective, uh, the EDL uh, coverage and the lineage uh, coverage from the is is really critical part in a governance story. And EDC provides uh, that that coverage uh, from from the governance platform perspective in in profiling and glossary portfolio. So EDC tool can integrate with uh, with the data quality and uh, Exxon, which is which is the business glossary tool. Uh, to bring the end-to-end -end coverage from integration perspective. In 10.5, we have come up with uh, uh, integrated installer. So initially, before 10.5, you had to have a separate installer. For advanced kernels, post 10.5, you will have just one installer script, which would have uh, advanced kernel installation as well. Uh, the, the admin UI integration helps uh, you to uh, automate the creation, execution, and control of the EDC resource via advanced kernel UI. So now you can run uh, the from the advanced kernel UI. You can integrate uh, the uh, the uh, the scanners onto EDC. It makes it native, so uh, the uh, now advanced scanners can leverage the full EDC features, uh, support EDC features like like uh, connectionless metadata or connection assignment or reference object has been supported. Uh, the license uh, is is now you you initially were you were supplied two different licenses for advanced scanners and for the platform. And the advanced scanners are still being purchased separately. But then if you have advanced scanner license being purchased with the with the platform, you would essentially get one license that would have both uh, the platform uh, license and advanced cameras as well. So that brings me to the end of my presentation. I will now hand it over to, to Thomas to run us through the demonstration of, of a few of the sources to give us a feel of how does it look like in advanced camera world. With that, I will hand it over to uh, Thomas. Thomas, over to you, please. Thank you. Thank you, Devashish. So right now, let's see the advanced scanners in action. Let's see what is the benefit of having the combined solution of EDC and advanced scanners in place. So let's assume first that we, as a company, are a Microsoft shop. We have different types of Microsoft technologies in place that are responsible of delivering data to our daily reports. And let's try to trace back the data flow from the reporting layer into the system of records. First of all, what we did, we have scanned the entire environment for the advanced scanners and we have populated a number of different resources inside of EDC platform. Let's try to find out how the reporting services layer has been derived into the catalog. So we can search for a resource. This resource is called MS SSRS Demo 2. Let's get inside of this resource. And what we can find out over there is that there are a number of different objects that has been extracted out of the environment and pushed into the catalog. We can see that there are some data sets, projects, reports, and folders being exposed to the user for the EDC. So let's dive deeper into the reports to learn what types of reports has been scanned and delivered. As we can see, there were four reports in our environment. And let's assume that we would like to find out how the data flow has been constructed and how the data has been delivered for one of those reports, which is employee product sales per calendar quarter. Let's click on this report. Let's click on the lineage and impact and let's see how the flow is going to be rendered on the screen. In the first shot, we are getting the resource level lineage. We can easily learn that report stored in the resource MSSRS demo 2 has been built on an object that is coming from exactly the same resource. The data for this object has been derived from the analytical services layer, which has been built on top of the 
MS SQL database. And those tables have been populated further from some additional tables from a SQL Server um, database or from some other resources that were derived by the integrational services. So this is the resource level lineage. Let's expand all to dive deeper in and understand fully how the data flow has been constructed in the transformation landscape. After expanding all of the objects, we can easily learn that our report of interest, which was report employee product sales per calendar quarter, has been built on top of the data set called data set one. This data set has been populated from a number of different objects from analytical services layer. We can see that there were there was a cube which contained a measure and three dimensions. Those has been built on top of the data source um, objects, data source views. The data that were derived through the data source views were taken from a database tables from a SQL Server environment. Mm -hmm. And those tables have been further populated from another set of tables or files derived by the SSIS uh, processing layer. So as you can see pretty easily, we can learn in a graphical way how the data has been derived to our report and without any technical knowledge from any of those technologies, we can trace down the, the flow from the system of records till the very end of the journey till the report. Right now, let's try to dive deeper. What if we would like to learn more about each and every processing step that has been applied on our data? So what we can do, we can click on this transformations just to turn, the, turn, turn those on. And on each and every object where any transformation has been applied, we can see an extra orange bubble that represents the processing tasks. Let's assume that we would like to learn more about this processing piece, right? So we would like to find out how the DIM product has been populated and we would like to learn more about the process which is between the sources and this table. We can click on this orange bubble and in a couple of seconds, we will be moved into the detailed lineage which will expose the whole technical information. So what we can learn here from this picture is that the product has been derived from those two CSV files, which are on the left. And in the middle, we have a processing task. In this case, this is an SSIS process, the data task called load dim product. This is the information we can easily get and learn from EDC. But what if our analysis would require some deeper knowledge about this process? What if we would like to understand how this particular data task has been designed and developed in the source technology? There are two options how we can collect this data. First option is to switch to the source technology, to the SSIS designer, to learn more about the source process. But this would require, first of all, to have access to the source environment, and this would uh, require some extra efforts from our end to continue the analysis. What we can do as a second option, and that's what we will do right now, we can utilize the full picture that is derived through the advanced scanners into the EDC. We can click on our data task, and then under the system of attributes, we can click on the visualization. Each and every transformation unit derived by the advanced scanner contains extra link called visualization, which de derives a bit more information about the processing. Once we logged in into the advanced scanners, we will be able to see another diagram with a bit more, a bit more higher granularity, right? What we can see here is that, uh, we can still see what are the sources the same way like in EDC, but instead of having single object in between representing the data task, we can see what types of components were used in the source technology to deliver proper logic. So we can see that the data flow was walking through all for those different components in the SSIS between the system of records, between the files on the left side and the uh, final landing zone, the tables on the right side. And 
In addition to that, due to the fact that the whole diagram, the whole visualization is interactive, we can expand each and every block to, to gather more information about the processing. If you would like to find out like where, what was the flow, what was the journey for the product alternate key column, we can double click on that column and then the full journey will be highlighted in yellow, right? And we can see in each and every block, first of all, what was the source data for those for this particular column. And we can easily learn that there were two columns used as a source, product alternate key and product key. And if we'll expand each and every block on the way, we will be able to get even information about the transformations applied in each and every step. So as you can see in the very next step after the CSV file has been read, we can see that there was an expression applied that was concatenating those two columns values, right? We can see that the product key plus product alternate key has been concatenated together to deliver the data to our final column later on. It is possible that on the way there were some further enhancements and if we would ex continue expanding our components, we would be able to learn more and we would be able to find out what has happened in each and every following step in the flow. So as you can see, very detailed information about the process, not only representing the uh, technology and the column level relationships, but also we can see on the components level how the process has been constructed in the source technology. So right now let's, let's return back to our EDC and let's return back to our initial picture, right? So what we have learned so far is that, first of all, we can get easily, once the advanced scanners deliver metadata into the catalog, table level lineage, which represents and shows all of the relationships between different various objects in the environment, between various technologies as well. We can dive deeper to understand a bit more about the processing layer, how particular data task, how particular process has been constructed in the source technology. But what if we would like to focus on a particular column? We don't care about the whole report. We would like to focus on a single column, on a single metric on the report, and we would like to trace it back to the system of records. Of course, this is possible. We can select any column from the report, from the table, whatever we are analyzing and we can trace it back to the ultimate sources. So we have selected employee name as a column that we would like to get more details about. And what we can learn from this picture is, first of all, how many data objects, which are nothing else like column level objects were involved in the processing. And also what we can learn is how many data elements, which are column level objects have been involved in the processing. So this is the high level resource level diagram. If we'll expand all, once again, we will get the column level lineage, which will represent the full data journey for our employee name. So we can see that in the SSRS, the data has been simply read from the data set. Uh, on the cube level, the data has been simply propagated. However, in the data source view, in the analytical services layer, something has happened, right? There was there were three columns utilized on the input side, last name, first name, and middle name to build employee name in the SSAS. So if you would like to dive deeper and understand what has happened in this particular place, what types of expression has been mm, utilized to calculate the employee name, we can click on that calculation. And then once again, under the system of attribute, we'll be able to get the full expression without leaving the environment, right? We'll be able to learn that the expression used to calculate employee name was formed in a case as a, as a case statement right we can learn that uh, if middle name is null which means that doesn't contain any data then employee name has been constructed out of the first name and last name with the space in between and when the middle name contains any data, then the employee name has been constructed as a concatenation of first name, middle name, and last name with some spaces and dots in between, right? So we can easily learn what algorithm, what expression has been used in the system source system to calculate value for the um, metric utilized on our report. So this is the first use case. Right now, let's assume that we would like to switch to a 
totally different technology. We would like to switch to an Oracle environment and we would like to learn more about additional and other processing. Let's focus for a while on, on a source code. And let's assume that we have a dynamic framework in our on Oracle environment, right? So what you can see right now on the screen is a processing that allows business users or analysts to drive the processing through a metadata stored in a table, right? What you can see here is that in the original environment, we have just two tables which are used as a source, just to simplify the example. And we have one additional table which derives the logic, right? We have something which is called report definition, which defines nothing else like what table will be created, what will be the report column, which is our KPI, and how to calculate the value for the particular KPI that will be collected, right? So as you can see in this case, in, in this framework, there were some select statement utilized to form the logic how a particular KPI should be calculated. And in the two first examples, we have some aggregations, right? Um, uh, in another two examples where we are mm, building some KPIs related to the product, we have uh, some more sophisticated uh, use cases where we are having some embedded SQLs, where we are having some functions used uh, with some join operator oper operations inside. So this is the definition of the processing. And just below those tables, we have the actual code responsible for the execution, right? As you can see, we have one package, reports PKG, which defines couple of procedures and function, right? We have generate report, generate report with some input value variables, create report table with input variable, generate reports column with input variable and function, which is also utilizing some input variables to construct results set. And here we have the full description what those procedures are doing, right? So we can see, first of all, that this function is taking two parameters on the input side and based on the input, it is uh, through the case statements, through the various case statements is deriving the results to the input, right? Then we have the generate report um, procedure, which is reading from our report definition metadata table and based on the number of rows inside of this table is for each row is triggering two stored procedures. It's triggering generate report table with a row used as on an input side. And later on in the next step, generate report with exact, using exactly the same row information. Then we have create report table, which is taking the data once again from the report definition table and is constructing dynamically a statement that is later on executed for the execute immediate uh, command. Another procedure, generate report, is building a cursor through the, that is built on top of the report definition table. And then inside of the loop is triggering generate report column procedure to follow the processing. Another procedure, generate report column, is taking a row type of report definition. And um, once again, is triggering the function and then is executing for the execute immediate statement some additional processing. So as you can see, those procedures are pretty dynamic. First of all, they are there is a huge interdependency between those procedures. Uh, those procedures are calling each other. And they are passing some parameters um, uh, to the inputs of those procedures of the, to those calls. And as you can see, without knowledge about how the processing has been defined inside of the report definition table, there is no way to understand how the processing looks like, what has been built, what types of table has been populated, what data has been derived to those tables, etc. So this processing is a typical dynamic framework where metadata is external metadata is driving the processing. And to be able to understand the logic, we need to uh, analyze the source code with a proper execution context that includes this 
metadata tables. And right now, let's see how advanced scanners can derive lineage, can derive metadata out of such processing. So let's once again switch to uh, our EDC catalog. And let's see how the processing looks uh, over there. So as you remember, one of the uh, one of the uh, report that has been uh, that has been built uh, as a result of the framework was called uh, product report. And let's try to find this particular table and let's do the analysis on that table. So there is a product report table. Let's click on that table and let's draw a lineage for, for it. First of all, what we, what we can learn is that this table has been derived, has been populated from two source tables, right? We have a product and a customer on the input side. So this is pretty much what we were expecting by after looking into the source code. As you remember, there were just two tables used as a source for our processing. So pretty simplified picture delivered for the business and technical users for the EDC. You, we can easily learn what was the source for this particular report that has been constructed through this dynamic framework. And right now let's try to dive deeper to learn more about this processing. So once again, we can turn on those transformations. As you can see, the orange orange bubble um, appeared on the screen. We can click on this orange bubble and we can dive deeper to learn more about this processing. And here what we will learn is we'll find out how the processing has been triggered, right? We can easily learn that there were some statements, there was a generated report procedure, there was a generated report procedure that was um, triggered with proper input parameter that was responsible for the whole execution uh, and delivering data from those two tables on the input side to the product report. And if we would like to dive deeper to understand how this has been constructed, how this has been um, uh, scanned and analyzed through our scanner. Once again, we can click on the statement, we can go to our visualization link, and then through the visualization layer, we will be able to get each and every details about the processing, right? And as you can see, first of all, what you need to remember is that Advanced scanners are not creating complexity. We are just exposing the complexity of the code, right? So in EDC, you have a very precise and precise and complete picture about the processing, right? You can see that what was what were the sources, what was the target in the processing. Here, what you can see is a very technical information for this visualization that is representing the full complexity, is exposing the full complexity of the code. We can see that there was a general report procedure on the first level, and then we can start diving deeper into the code, right? We can see that there was a loop. This loop was, once again, triggering some general report column, and we can continue our journey until we, are, we will hit the final, the final uh, execution, right? What, until we will hit the function that was that was being used, and until we will hit the proper processing where the data is taken from the source tables, right? So as you can see, easily we can find out how the code has been understood by the scanner and how the code has been executed normally in the environment. We can see all of those procedure calls that we were uh, getting into during the analysis just to deliver precise and complete information into the EDC catalog. So let's, let's return back to our EDC catalog. And let's return back to our picture. So this is the table level, right? Right now, let's try to find out how particular KPI has been calculated. As you remember, product report contained two KPIs, right? There was a mm, one of those was called cheapest product code. This was the one which was using uh, that was using function inside that was using join operation inside. So let's dive deeper into this one to find out how the data has been derived, right? So we can click OK, and in a 
Second, we will get a similar picture that is focused on this particular KPI only. And what we can learn is that this KPI in cheapest product code has been derived out of the product name from product table and for the customer name from customer table. And this is the full processing chain, right? And if you would like to understand how the calculation has been applied, we can click on, on the result set, right? And what we will learn is that there was a case statement from the function that was utilized to construct our data, right? So without even leaving the ADC, without uh, any knowledge about the how it has been executed, without any knowledge about um, different dependencies between various procedures, functions, we can easily learn how the information has been calculated in the source environment before it was reaching our table with KPIs. This, this was another example where a dynamic framework driven, where the processing is driven by the metadata can be also easily handled automatically through the advanced scanner and delivered in a meaningful way to the end user. Let's focus on one, one more example. Let's assume that we are, we are um, mainframe shop, right? We have um, legacy tools that are using JCL, COBOL, DB2, SAS mainframe to deliver data for our reporting. So what if we are, if we're such users, if we have those types of processes in place? Uh, due to the fact that advanced scanners are supporting those technologies, we can also easily scan source code coming from those mainframe technologies and deliver it into the catalog in an automatic fashion. So let's assume that in our environment, we have, let me once again switch back to the source code. We have a JCL processes JCL job called demo job one that is triggering and is orchestrating the whole processing. Um, and what we can learn from this processing, we can learn that in this JCL job, there are a couple of steps responsible for the execution, right? So in the first step, we are unloading something from the cust from a customer, uh, from a database table, from a DB2 a database into the customer file. And if I'll go into the unload control statement that is defining the logic, I will be able to learn that we are unloading PL customers table uh, from a table space, which is described here. In the very next step, we are once again interacting with DB2 database. This time the whole unload statement is embedded into the code. There is no complexity with that. Both situations are nicely handled by the advanced scanner. And we are once again, uh, delivering data into another file called filtered customer file. In the very next step, we are calling external JCL job because the real life scenarios are usually more complex than uh, it, uh, it could be. We are, th this JCL job is calling another JCL job just to do some additional enhancements of the data. And here what we can see is that we are passing to the JCL job two parameters, sort in and sort out, and we are assigning some values to this to those parameters. If I'll go to this JC demo job one, we will see that this is a pretty generic JCL job, which is in fact doing just sort operation. However, without information what is used as a sort in and what is used as a sort out, we cannot learn much about the processing. In this situation, due to the fact that, that advanced scanners can trace the parameters uh, properly, uh, between such JCL calls, we can trace the data flow nicely and we can extract metadata very precisely from the uh, mainframe process. Let's go back to our orchestrating job. In the very next step, we are once again unloading something from a, DIM, from a database table, from a DB2, this time to a bit more sophisticated um, landing zone, we are unloading to a VSAM to a VSAM file, right? So VSAM files are pretty um, popular in the mainframe world. So whenever those are used as a source or as a target in the processing, uh, advanced scanner will create proper read from or write to operation just to expose this, uh, this fact. In another step, we are calling in a SAS step one, we are calling SAS program, right? We, we are calling SAS base program, which is called SAS prog one. And we are assigning two input parameters to the SAS program, legacy 01, legacy 04. 
if I will go to the SAS program, I will learn that legacy 04 is used as an input. The data is being enhanced uh, on the way through a couple of different SAS steps. And as in a final step, we are pushing output into the um, into the file which is defined by the legacy 04 parameter um, to return back the, the data to a file. So as you can see, once again, without knowledge about parameters that were passed from the JCL, it is difficult or even impossible to understand what has happened and what is the data flow uh, that comes from the SAS program. program. Uh, in another step, we are once we are uh, loading something into the DB2, uh, we'll skip that process. In a very next process, we are calling another type of um, processing. We're calling COBOL program, CMP report, and we are defining two parameters, casting and summary. If I will go to the CMP report, I will be able to learn that this is pretty typical COBOL program where we are having environment division, where we are defining some, then we are having the data division where we are defining some structures, either through an embedded structures or using some uh, copy books. Then we are having working storage section. We are also executing embedded SQL from within this um, uh, COBOL program. Uh, which is doing some additional processing on the DB2 level. And then we have the procedure division, which is manipulating with the data. And in one of the lines, what happens is that we are calling an external COBOL program called test customer. And we are passing to this COBOL program some variables, WS cast in, WL, WS cast name. And if I'll go to this cast, test customer, I will see that from the, through the linkage section, we are utilizing the, the input. We are enhancing the, the data that came from the, uh, from the CMP report, and we are returning back the data into the main program CMP report. So as you can see, this is the typical scenario where one COBOL is calling another program, COBOL program. This COBOL is doing some magic on the data and is returning back the information to the parent process. Uh, and if I'll go back to this demo job one, I will see that in the final step, what happens is that we are once again interacting with DB2 and we are loading from a summary file something into the DB2 through the load control statement. And if I'll go to this load control statement, I'll see that we are populating PL best customers table. So right now, let's see how does the process looks like inside of our ADC catalog. So what we will do, we will search for our PL best customer table, which was our landing zone for the mainframe data. And we will try to draw a diagram, data lineage diagram for this particular table. So we'll click lineage and impact. And what we'll get is first we'll get the resource level information. Um, and if we'll expand all, we will learn a bit more about the processing, right? What we'll get is the information, how the processing looks like on the mainframe side. So as you can see, this PL best customer has been derived from summary.file. This has been derived from a various of files and the tables from a DB2 environment. Then one of the tables has been derived from another processing that uh, was sourcing the data from SAS data sets. And in the final stages, the one of the tables that was used as a, one of the ultimate sources was PL customers legacy from, um, from the database. So this is the table level lineage. If once again, if I would like to dive deeper to understand what has happened in each and every step, I have this possibility, I can turn on transformation. And if, for example, I would like to find out what has happened in this step, I can click on the orange bubble and I can learn more and I can dive deeper to understand what has happened. And in this case, as you can see, the summary file has been derived from the CMP report COBOL program that was also using test cast program, as you can see, right? So it was pushing data to the test cast and test customer was returning back to the CMP report and then CMP report was populating summary file. And there were three sources used for this processing. There was a file, customer file sorted, and PL transactions and PL products uh, from the database table. So this is the full information about the processing. And if I would like to dive deeper once again to the visualization layer, I would be able to do this. For on each and every item, we have this visualization link available where we could dive deeper to see how this has been designed in the source technology. But let's, let's return back to our main flow. And 
let's see if the column level is being exposed exactly the same way like for some like for other technologies let's pick up one of the uh, some of the items from our PL best customer table. Let's assume that we would like to trace back name and total. We'll click OK. And then we will get the same picture as for other technologies that we can expand and we can learn what has happened in the environment, right? So we can easily find out how the data has been derived from, to, from those different technologies. And whenever, whenever there is any transformation in between, we can see that information, right? So here we can see that something has happened. We can go into this orange bubble, right? We can go into the detail lineage. And then in, in the detail lineage, if I will click on my, on my uh, calculation, I will be able to see that such expression has been utilized in the source environment to calculate my data. So just to summarize, so as you can see, regardless of the technology that is used in our environment, as long as the technology is being supported through the advanced scanners, we can deliver very precise and complete information describing the logic, not only table level relationships, but also column level relationships, including all of the transformations that has been applied on the data on the way. Thank you so much, Thomas, for such an informative session. I'm sure uh, all the audience would have more questions about it and then we are happy to take them up from here. Uh, thank you so much everyone for joining on with us on this webinar. Looking forward for more collaboration in coming days to come. Uh, please feel free to ask any questions and we should be happy to take it from here. Thank you so much. Everyone, please post your questions in the Q&A box. We'll try and answer them. I think by the time uh, when the few questions are getting answered, let me pick a couple of questions which have been asked. I think that would benefit everyone. Uh, uh, Thomas, let's do it this way. I'm going to ask questions to you, and you may be able to pick that up for answers. Sure. So. So there's one which says we have 10 for one. Uh, will the training still apply that we take for 10 for one for advanced scanner, or do we need to? So is there a change in advanced scanner? Do we need to change it again? Do we need to learn more, or is that the same advanced scanner that we had in 10 for one? So in 10.5, we have a couple of extra features that have been added to the product, right? That has been described um, uh, in, during the PowerPoint presentation. Uh, however, 10.4 uh, already derived number of different functionalities that might be very helpful in the existing environment, right? So if uh, you are having 10.4 environment and uh, the list of support technologies is satisfying you from the 10.4 version, then definitely this can be utilized and there is no need to upgrade. However, in 10.4 10 version, there are a couple of extra functionalities features that have been uh, added to the product that might be worth to consider. All right, thank you. Uh, so does that uh, mainframe uh, VOS, CA, GN, which is now .com, is that supported uh, with the advanced scanners that we have for the mainframes? Uh, can you repeat? So mainframes, VOS, uh, CA, GN, which, which is, which is uh, .com. Uh, so, so from mainframe perspective, we are supporting we are supporting the the cobble, the the plain cobble, right? Uh, in, uh, and also the JCL, which is the orchestrating utility on the IBM's mainframe environment. And in addition to that, we are also supporting SAS mainframe and DB2ZOS mainframe as well, right? So, so those four technologies, as long as they are used um, uh, in the environment, this, those can be nicely handled through the advanced scanners and the metadata can be automatically captured and delivered into the ADS catalog. Perfect. Uh, so basically we have uh, say ADC, uh, ADC or ECHO for, and, and for, for advanced scanner and standard scanner both. And then if I am trying to uh, do a scan on both the resources, there are a way that I can merge it because because I believe that in an Oracle uh, standard scanner, I would get tables and views. And for short procedure, it is in packages, it's for advanced scanners. So do I need to merge both or can that be achieved only with advanced scanner? Uh, 
so the whole process consists of two steps, right? So in the first step, what you are doing, you are using the standards kind of just to populate the resource with the ta list of tables, right? Just to have the core assets loaded into the into the into the catalog. And then what you are doing, you are using the advanced scanners just to parse the stored procedures, and those will automatically be linked into the existing core assets already loaded into the catalog, right? So which means that there is, we will not duplicate the same core assets. The table will be only do, or will be loaded once only. We will just provide proper relationships between the stored procedures logic and core assets loaded for the standard scanner. So, this, so there, are, there is two steps process to populate catalog with metadata. Right, and just to add to what Thomas said, so, right, and then just to add, if if you have a use case here where you're looking for only tables and views, then then it is you you are mostly a candidate for standard scan scanners. But then if you have a use case where you require to do tables, views, of course, and then you would want to go ahead and then do these packages, procedures, functions, and things like that. Then you might want to take advanced scanner, and then you can do all of it together in the advanced scanner as, as one entity. All right, so there's one which says that, uh, so EDC advanced scanners runs with Informatica Power Center, or is that a separate product altogether? Uh, Thank you, I understood this question. Uh, EDC advanced scanner uh, runs with Informatica. Uh, all right, so this is this is not Power Center product which advanced scanners are connected to. This is the EDC product which enterprise data catalog, and th this is this is a separate separate product altogether on the same platform uh, and has a different architecture altogether. Advanced scanner is complementing EDC, which is which is the data curation uh, product that we have at Informatica. A Power Center is one of the connectors in the standard scanner space. It will uh, it will be good if we can see a demo of advanced scanning from administrator end. Uh, all right, so we will take a note of it, and in future sessions, we'll try to cover if we can do a similar session like that. With the license yeah, change definitely. and advanced scanner being yeah, okay. with the license changing right. and advanced scanner will include in ten five no uh, ten. It is not the license changing which is happening on 10.5. It is the license which is getting incorporated with the domain license. Essentially, you will have to still purchase the advanced scanner license separately. However, uh, with 10.5 onwards, you would not get two keys for advanced scanner and domain separately. It would be just one key where you'll have domain and advanced scanner being embedded. But you still have to purchase advanced scanner separately. How often would you refresh all your data sources? So it depends, right? So there is, there is no sure one good answer. There, there is no one good answer to that, right? So it it depends how often they are changing, right? So usually what our customers do, they are putting the refreshing process at the end of the uh, release cycle, which means that if you have, for example, monthly releases to the production of your code, then uh, as a last step of the release cycle, there is a metadata refreshment process being triggered, right? Just to keep, just to synchronize your metadata catalog with your operational systems. So that's, the, that's the, I believe, the best strategy you can implement, right? So whenever the code is changing, that's a good time to trigger also metadata refreshment process. Fair enough. Thank you so much. Uh, then there is one more, uh, which is uh, which is related to advanced scanner installer. So if I have advanced scanner in 10.4.1 and then I'm doing an upgrade to 10.5, how do I handle the advanced scanners in 10.5 in the upgrade process? I would say you stay tuned uh, to this forum. There is another webinar which is coming in on June 3rd, where we're going to talk about uh, the upgrades and install. Uh, this is centric on a grid and install, so look forward for another mailer from uh, from us, and then that is when we'll cover all of the, these doubts and things around it. Um, along with mainframes, DB2, does the advanced scanner support lineage to mainframes INS? Um, uh, IMS, uh, the, the advanced scanner covers just very basic use cases of IMS, right? So, um, so it's always a good thing to look at the examples that, uh, that, that you might have. However, very basic examples are covered, uh, but uh, this might be not enough to handle your code, right? So uh, whenever we are talking to the customers that are using IMS, uh, it's always a matter just to be able to discuss, to better understand what types of use cases do you have in mind to validate if our current 
um, uh, uh, current support is enough or not. All right, we just have one minute. I'm going to pick this one. Um, the, does the advanced scanner provide lineage for a SQL server BCP command or a SQL loader? I see DB2 uh, load utility is supported. Uh, yes, uh, uh, SQL loader, SQL loader BCP is supported. If it is being triggered from the from the procedure from the code, it is being supported. Uh, if we are talking about a SQL loader, uh, it is also nicely supported. Um, so all of those um, uh, CTL files can be nicely put in front of the scanner, and then the uh, the lineage will be automatically pushed into the EDC catalog. Yes, so those are supported. There are a number of different, depending on the on the database flavor, there might be different loading utilities, but um, uh, many of those are supported. It's always good to validate case by case if the if the particular uh, loading utility is supported or not. Okay, just last one I'm going to take up. So is there an ability to export query the relationship and lineage for analysis? Um, so export from the from the from the from the diagram, right? So um, uh, yes, yeah, so so if so, EDC functionality del del delivers extra uh, extra thing because you can not only trace the flow through the graphical lineage diagram where the, those objects are being rendered, but there is also a capability that allows you to uh, put exactly the same information into the table, uh, and then you can filter it out. You can filter those objects that you are would like to leave in the table, and then you can export it into the Excel file and then send it to, send it further, right? So there is a capability to be able to uh, push the same diagram that you see on the screen in a graphical way into the text file and then uh, do the remaining magic you want to do. All right, so we are at the top of the hour. Uh, Brenda, you want to take it up from here? Thank you thank so you much, everyone, for joining in. So Looking forward. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Devashish and Thomas. Uh, looks like we have a few questions because of the uh, limitation in time. We wouldn't be able to uh, answer those questions, but definitely we'll get back to you after the session. Uh, this session was uh, recorded and will be available in the Informatica Support YouTube channel and the Success Portal. You will also be able to download the slide deck uh, from Success Portal. Uh, thank you, uh, everyone, for joining. Thank you, Thomas. and. Devashesh for the wonderful session. Thanks everyone. See you on our next next Tuesday. Bye. Thank you so much, guys. Have a great one. Bye bye. Be safe. Thank you. Bye bye.